welcome to part 3 of my Black & Decker bandsaw video. In part 2, I showed you the motor and I took it apart and replaced the wiring. In part 3, I will show you the motor back in the machine and hopefully the machine working. So let's get straight into part 3. Right, well I've got the motor back in the bandsaw now, it's fitted in. I've connected up the wiring as you can see. I've got the, I haven't fitted the switch cover on, I've left it like this because I'm going to test it before I do any more. So uh, what I've done, I've taken the actual belt off because obviously it would be a bit dangerous having the machine running with this blade whizzing round uh, with no cover on it, it could fly off or something. So I've taken the belt off so it's completely safe. So I'm just going to plug it in and run the motor up and see if it actually works uh, since I've done the repair and fitted the motor in. So here we go. Now I'll plug in and switch on. I'll switch that off first. And just make sure it's switched on at the switch there. It's switched on there. Everything's connected up. So if I switch on here, it should now work. And I've switched on and it's not working. Now I wonder what that is. Well, it's simple actually. Uh, what happened is that when these wires fused together and the saw, when it went wrong, uh, it shorted out and it obviously it's blown the fuse in the plug. And it's easy to overlook that because if it happened some weeks ago, you could spend hours repairing it, fiddling around with it, trying to find the fault, and all it is is the fuse gone in the plug. So even after I've repaired it, if you forgot that little thing, you could possibly spend some time thinking, oh no, it still doesn't work, and take it all apart again, and it's just the fuse. So always remember, check the fuse, so I've got to do that now. So I'll unplug again, and uh, see what happens. There we go. I'll take the fuse out and pop another one in. I've got a fuse here somewhere. Oh, there's one. Pop the fuse in. I wonder how many hours people have spent trying to mend things when it's just a fuse gone. It's, it's easy to fall into that trap and you forget about it, especially if you've done a job like this some weeks ago. Right, that's it. I'll put a new fuse in. Now we'll plug it in and see what happens. Switch off. Turn on. There we go. As you can see, the motor is now turning, which it didn't do before. So. Hopefully, if I put it all back together now, we should have a working saw again. I'll just turn that off. Make sure you unplug it when you do any more work. And as I've mentioned several times before, if you don't feel qualified, don't get involved. Uh, this is a bit of a fiddle here, because I've got to get all this... I, I've left the wires, actually left the wires longer, because it's much easier if you have to take it apart again, if you've got long wires, you can always sort of tidy them up because uh, if they're too short, it's a job fiddling around. So what I'm going to do, the capacitor goes in this way with the connections down at the bottom out of the way. So I'm just going to poke that down in there, look. And hopefully it'll go in far enough. Yeah, that's all right. Just a question of popping these in. Oh dear, now where's my Phillips screwdriver? I know, my wife borrowed it to take the Christmas tree off the stand the other day and she hasn't brought it back, has she? I don't like her using my tools. I'll have to find another one. I'll get my trusty Hoover screwdriver, special long Hoover screwdriver on the job. I'll pop that in there. It's a bit of a fiddle this, but we'll get there in the end. I'm used to doing fiddly jobs. I don't like it, but I'm always, I'm always doing jobs that seem fiddly. I'm just going to lay it on its back, I think, put the bottom one in so I can see what I'm doing. You won't be able to see it, mine, but it's not very exciting anyway. I mean, it's quite a well-made little machine, this. It's certainly, you know, this is when they made machines a lot better than today. I mean, now, you'd probably buy it would be made in Taiwan or something, and most of it would be plastic. I mean, this is a, a solid alloy casting. It's pretty robust, actually, for the price they charged at the time. Right, I've got the switch unit on. Now it's a matter of just popping the belt back on. And hopefully, Bob's your uncle, so to speak. Do you know, my hands are so cold. It's a job to do anything. It's freezing. Really cold last night. I, mean, I had a job. In fact, when I came out of the workshop this morning, I couldn't get the key in the lock. It was frozen solid. And I had to get a, 
uh, a little lighter and warm the key up before I get the door open. It was so cold. There we go. Right, that's all that done. Um, now what have I got to do? I've got the cover to put on, but I think I'm going to put. I've got to put the table on first. This is the table. I must remember those two spacers because uh, it's a bit of a fiddle getting this on. I remember last time I had a job. I was told not taking it off actually. It's a bit of a fiddle trying to hold this because the bolt tends to fall through and you can't get your finger behind. You can get your finger behind the one. I'll put that one on first then. Put that one on. Then you have a spacer. And then these, these um, plastic knurled knobs with nuts inside. And that just goes in there like that and holds it. And the same on the other one. But this one's more awkward because the bolt just keeps popping through. I remember I had a job doing this before when I took it off. As, as you try and put the nut on the bolt goes falling through and you can't uh, get behind it to hold it in place easily. Unless I can put a screwdriver in and hold it that way. I'll try that. That might work. Let's try that. Right. Nope, it's gone straight in. It's right behind that pulley. That's damn silly that. <laughs> The bolt head is behind the pulley where you can't get to it, so every time you try and put the nut on, it pushes the bolt in. You see what I mean? So I'm going to have to put a little screwdriver in and try and hold it tight when I do it. Once you get this, the um, nut to take, it's alright, that's it, I've got it on there. So down the of that, poor design folks. That's that. And now all I've got to do... Uh, I've got to put that little little bar on the front. So you've got to make sure you've got that square of the table. It is adjustable. And the easiest way of doing that is to get the fence if you can find it. And I don't know where I'll put it now. Oh, here it is. This is the fence. And this just fits on here. And you need to get it square with the table. So the easiest way is to line it up with this little slot. If you get that lined up at one end with a slot like that. And then you can adjust these nuts until it's square with a slot, which it seems to be anyway now. So that should be about, that's if you use the fence, I don't normally use it actually. So now all I've got to do is put the cover on. Actually this is taking less time to get it back together than I thought it would. Plastic cover, it's just got these little spring loaded doings that hold it in place. Just turn around like that, turn buttons, that one. It's all going too well folks, something's bound to go wrong. One saw assembled, now will it work? You know, I'm so mean with my wood. Uh, I don't like cutting wood up and wasting it, and I couldn't find a bit of scrap wood, so I'm gonna have to use this little, nice little board here that I've taken out of something. It's, uh, it's a bit of ash by the looks of things, but it'll do for testing purposes. So let's switch on and see if it works, there we go. One bandsaw back in action. So that was a worthwhile job doing really, wasn't it? Uh, for no, no cost involved, just a bit of time. One thing that annoys me about these machines like this, this particular saw, I'm just gonna turn it round to get a better view on the other camera. On this little switch here, and now you'll notice it's an illuminated switch, but it's not illuminated at the moment. Now when you turn it on, it lights up. And when you turn it off, it goes off. Now, to my mind, I always think that's the wrong way around. Now, it may be okay if you're deaf, perhaps. That's the reason, I don't know. But if you're not deaf, I don't need a light on when it's going because I can hear the blooming thing anyway. Whereas when it's uh, when it's turned off, I'd ra it's quite easy to forget you've got that turned on, obviously. Now, I can't see the purpose. It's not a no-volt release switch. So if I turn it off at the mains, if I turn that switch on now and turn that on, it will just go, which I think is a bit dangerous. It, uh, today it probably wouldn't be allowed on a new one. It should have a no volt release switch really, so that when you turn it back on, if it's switched on, it won't come on. But this hasn't got that, obviously. Now, to me, I would prefer that light to come on, so that it was on when the, the machine isn't going, so that I could see that it was still plugged in. Do you see what I mean? It's, it's really annoying. I think it's the wrong way around. It needs a warning light. Because when it's going, I can hear it's going. I, I suppose, like I say, it's if you're a deaf, uh, 
you you wouldn't hear it and it would show it but to me it, I, I don't I'm not sure I don't know I don't know the reason I always think the light would be better on when you're actually not using it so that you know it's plugged in still but obviously the the real answer will be no volt release switch on it but I don't use it much I mean most of my other band saws have got that feature on and this is only a spare one that I use for small jobs but anyway, that's about it folks. I, I think we've finished now. The bandsaw is now repaired. It's a working bandsaw again. Um, I just thought it was worth filming. There's, there may be a, a, a somebody out there who's got a Black & Decker variable speed bandsaw and uh, they've got a fault with it and it might they might find something of, of interest in it, taking it apart or whatever, and or the motor. I must say it was a tricky job to do that motor and if it goes again, I don't think I'll have a hope in hell of repairing that particular joint because there was very little left of the cable to join to and if it goes again I think I've had it but uh, anyway I think that's about all for now thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video bye for now there's actually a story attached to this bandsaw this isn't actually my original first bandsaw I did about 45 years ago I bought a Black & Decker bandsaw similar to this and uh, when we moved here uh, and I had a bigger workshop, I decided, and I had a bit more money, I decided I'd buy a better bandsaw and I bought a Startright 401, which is in the other room, I've still got it. And because it cost me quite a bit of money, I was a bit worried about spending the cash at the time. And so I sold my original Black & Decker bandsaw uh, to my brother. And uh, ever since I sold it to him, I wished I'd kept it because it's handy for doing smaller jobs with tighter turn, you know, tighter circles and that for cutting out. I know you can use a bigger bandsaw by putting a finer and a narrow blade in it but most people wouldn't bother changing the blade to do a particular job so it's always handy. I tried to buy it back off him but the little devil wouldn't sell it to me. He's still got it today stuck in his shed. Don't use it. I don't suppose he ever used it and uh, over the years I said come on I'll buy it back off you. No no I'll keep it on you like and the other day I actually mentioned it to him and he said oh well he said it's no good because the band's broke. And I said, what, do you mean the blade? And he says, yeah, the blade's broke. I said, we'll just put a new blade on it. It's easy enough to do, but you don't bother. Anyway, the story is that my old mate, Mr. Fowles, who I've mentioned in my other videos, he had this particular bandsaw and he always, he knew about my uh, wish to have my old one back. And he always used to say, well, don't worry. When I go, I'll leave it to you in my will, you see. So so this, this was like a joke between us over the years. And then... Um, some years ago, he got very ill and he decided that um, he wasn't going to do any more woodwork. And he said to me one day, well, look, you might as well take that bandsaw because if something happens to me, you probably won't get it, you see. So so I bought, I um, had the band, he gave me the saw. And at the same time, he's, he was going to do any more woodwork. So um, we uh, did a deal where I bought his entire workshop off him, all his machines and tools and stuff. And he spent the money on a good camera. That was the idea. So this is actually not my original bandsaw but it's basically the same model i've still got the original uh, instruction booklet that came with it uh, mr files gave me this and in the back there i already can see it on the camera there's the original receipt and on the receipt it's got tivoli trading company andover road cheltenham they're still in business by the way uh, they're like a an ironmonger hardware place and they were very good for things like this and all sorts of odds and ends and he paid £92.50 for it, and that was on the 27th of March, 1984. So actually, it's 36 years old, not 37, as I said in the original video. But there, there's the original book. Anyway, it's, it's not a bad little machine, really, especially as a spare one, or for doing smaller jobs. But I think that's about all for now, so bye for now.